Right now, someone is trying to break into a system you use. Not dramatically, with flashing screens and skull graphics. Quietly. Patiently. The average company doesn't discover a breach for 194 days. That's six months of attackers reading emails, copying files, and waiting. In 2017, Equifax lost the personal data of 147 million people. The attackers were inside for 76 days. The vulnerability they exploited? A patch had been available for two months. Nobody applied it. This is the reality of cybersecurity. It's not about if systems get attacked. They will. It's about understanding how attacks work, thinking like the people who launch them, and building defenses that actually matter. Over the next few minutes, we're going to follow an attack from start to finish. You'll see exactly how professionals break into systems, and more importantly, how defenders stop them. Before we trace an attack, you need to understand how security professionals think. Every security decision comes down to three things. Confidentiality, keeping secrets secret. When attackers steal customer data, they've broken confidentiality. Integrity, ensuring data hasn't been tampered with. When attackers modify financial records or plant false information, they've broken integrity. Availability, keeping systems running. When ransomware locks you out of your own files, that's an availability attack. Attackers target at least one of these. Every defense protects at least one. This framework, called the CIA Triad, helps you analyze any security situation. Here's the crucial insight. You cannot eliminate risk. Security is about reducing risk to acceptable levels while still getting work done. A system disconnected from the internet is secure, but useless. Your job is finding the right balance. Now, let's see how attackers exploit systems that got that balance wrong. Who actually attacks systems? It's not just hooded figures in basements. Nation-state actors have military-grade capabilities and specific targets. They're after intellectual property, government secrets, critical infrastructure. They're patient, well-funded, and sophisticated. Organized criminals want money, ransomware, financial fraud, stolen credit cards. They run like businesses, with customer service for victims paying ransoms. Hacktivists attack for ideological reasons. They want attention and disruption. Insider threats come from within. Disgruntled employees, careless contractors, compromised accounts. They already have access. And yes, some attackers are just curious. They probe systems to see if they can, sometimes causing damage by accident. Each type thinks differently, targets differently, and requires different defenses. For our attack walkthrough, we'll follow a criminal group targeting a mid-sized company. Their goal? Deploy ransomware and demand payment. First step, figure out who to attack and how. Every attack starts with reconnaissance, gathering information about the target. Our attackers begin with open source intelligence. The company website lists executives by name. LinkedIn shows employee job titles and technologies they use. Job postings reveal what software they're hiring for. Press releases mention partnerships and systems. This is all public, no hacking required, yet. Next, technical reconnaissance. What's the company's IP address range? DNS records show their mail servers and subdomains. A port scan reveals which services are running. Port 443 means a web server. Port 25 means email. Port 3389 means Windows Remote Desktop is exposed. Each open port is a potential door. The attackers find an employee portal at vpn.targetcompany.com. They find email addresses following the pattern firstname.lastname at company.com. They've built a target list without triggering a single alarm. The defenders never saw this coming because there was nothing to see. Yet, with reconnaissance complete, attackers look for vulnerabilities, weaknesses they can exploit. Every piece of software has bugs. When those bugs can be exploited for unauthorized access, they become security vulnerabilities. The industry tracks these with CVE numbers. CVE 2021-44228 was Log4 Shell. A flaw in logging software so widespread, it affected millions of servers. Our attackers scan the target's web applications. They find an outdated content management system with a known vulnerability. The patch has been available for eight months. The company never applied it. This is incredibly common. The hard part of security isn't knowing vulnerabilities exist. It's keeping thousands of systems updated when updates might break things. Attackers count on this gap between a patch being released and organizations actually installing it. But our attackers have a backup plan. Even patch systems have one vulnerability that never gets fixed. Humans. 
Social engineering exploits human psychology, not software bugs. It's devastatingly effective. Our attackers craft a phishing email. It looks like it's from the company's IT department. The subject line creates urgency. Action required. Password expiration notice. The email links to a fake login page that looks identical to the real employee portal. They send it to 30 employees they identified during reconnaissance. They only need one person to click. Within an hour, someone does. An employee enters their username and password into the fake page. The attackers now have valid credentials. No software was hacked. No firewall was breached. Someone just made a mistake under pressure. 90% of successful breaches involve phishing or social engineering. You can have perfect technical security and still lose everything because someone clicked a link. Defenders call this the human layer, and it's the hardest to patch. The attackers have stolen credentials. Now, they use them. They log into the VPN portal as the compromised employee. The system sees a valid username, valid password, from a plausible location. Nothing triggers an alert. They're inside the network now, but with limited access. This employee works in marketing. They can access marketing files, their email, maybe some shared drives. Not enough. The attackers need higher privileges. They begin exploring. What can this account access? What other systems are visible? They find the employee's workstation has outdated software with a known local privilege escalation vulnerability. They exploit it. Now they have administrator access on that one machine. From there, they extract cached credentials from memory. In corporate networks, administrator accounts often connect to many machines. Those connections leave traces. The attackers find domain admin credentials sitting in memory. Now, they control the entire network. With domain admin access, the attackers own the network. But they're not done. They need to stay hidden and prepare for the final strike. They create backdoor accounts that won't be noticed among thousands of legitimate users. They install persistent access tools that reconnect even if the original entry point is closed. They map the network completely. Where are the file servers? The database servers? The backup systems? The attackers specifically target backups. If the company can restore from backups, they won't pay ransom. They quietly delete backup copies and corrupt the backup software. This takes time, days, sometimes weeks. The attackers move slowly to avoid triggering alerts. They operate during business hours when network traffic is normal. They use legitimate admin tools already installed on systems. Nothing looks obviously malicious because they're using the same tools real administrators use. Where are the defenders during all this? Trying to find needles in a haystack. A typical corporate network generates millions of log events per day. Logins, file accesses, network connections, application events, most are legitimate. Defenders use SIEM systems, security information and event management, to aggregate these logs and correlate events. They write rules to detect suspicious patterns. Multiple failed logins followed by a success might indicate password guessing. Connections to known malicious IP addresses trigger alerts. Unusual data transfers get flagged. But skilled attackers know what triggers alarms and avoid it. They use valid credentials, so no failed logins. They connect to internal systems, not suspicious external ones. They move data slowly, not in obvious bulk transfers. The defenders in our scenario see nothing unusual. The SIM is quiet. The attackers are hiding in plain sight within normal network activity. Detection is hard when the enemy looks like everyone else. Three weeks after the initial phishing email, the attackers strike. Friday night, 11 p.m. IT staff has gone home. The ransomware deploys simultaneously across all systems. Within minutes, file servers are encrypted, database servers are locked, workstations display ransom demands. Even the backup servers, already corrupted, are now encrypted too. Monday morning, employees arrive to find nothing works. The ransom note demands $2 million in cryptocurrency. The clock is ticking. Pay within 72 hours or the price doubles. The company faces an impossible choice. Pay criminals with no guarantee they'll actually decrypt the files or lose months of work, customer data, and business operations. This is where incident response begins. Not with prevention, which already failed, but with containment, investigation, and recovery. The security team's job now is to stop the bleeding, understand what happened, and get the business running again. The incident response team activates. First priority, containment. Stop the bleeding. They isolate the network from the internet to prevent data exfiltration. They shut down systems that aren't yet encrypted. They preserve evidence before doing anything that might destroy it. Second, investigation. How did attackers get in? How long were they inside? 
What did they access? Forensic analysts examine logs, memory captures, and system artifacts. They trace the attack backwards from the ransomware to the phishing email. They identify every system the attackers touched. This determines the scope of the breach. Third, eradication and recovery. Remove every backdoor, every compromised account, every persistence mechanism. Restore systems from offsite backups the attackers didn't find. Rebuild what can't be restored. Finally, lessons learned. What failed? The unpatched systems? The employee who clicked? The missing detection rules? Each failure becomes a security improvement. Incident response isn't admitting defeat. It's how organizations get stronger. What could have stopped this attack? Multiple layers. Defense in depth means no single failure is catastrophic. Patch management would have closed the initial vulnerability. The attackers had a backup plan, but every closed door matters. Email security filtering would have caught the phishing attempt. Modern systems analyze links, attachments, and sender reputation. Not perfect, but raises the bar. Multi-factor authentication would have made stolen passwords useless. Even with valid credentials, attackers couldn't log in without the second factor. Network segmentation would have limited lateral movement. The marketing employee's account shouldn't reach domain admin credentials. Proper boundaries contain breaches. Endpoint detection would have spotted the privilege escalation and suspicious tools. Modern EDR watches for malicious behavior, not just known malware. Immutable offsite backups would have enabled recovery without paying ransom. Backups the attackers can't reach or delete. No single control is perfect. Together, they make attacks expensive and difficult. Most attackers move to easier targets. You've just traced a complete attack lifecycle. That knowledge is your foundation. Where do you go from here? Start with fundamentals. Networking, operating systems, and basic scripting aren't optional. You need to understand how systems work before you can secure them. Get hands-on experience. Build a home lab with virtual machines. Break things on purpose. Try capture the flag competitions where you solve security puzzles legally. Hack the box, try Hack Me, and Pico CTF are good starting points. Pursue structured learning. CompTIA Security Plus provides broad foundational knowledge. From there, specialize. Penetration testing, security operations, incident response, cloud security, governance and compliance. Each path needs different skills. The field is vast and constantly evolving. New vulnerabilities appear daily. Attackers adapt their techniques. Defenders must keep learning indefinitely. But here's the truth. The industry desperately needs skilled people. Master these fundamentals, stay curious, and think like an attacker. The invisible war needs more defenders.